Well, good day, people of faith. I am excited that you have found your way to participate in worshiping our Lord and Savior on this day. We are still in the midst of our of the Corona uh, COVID-19 social distancing order all across the globe. So on this day, we find ourselves fellowshipping by way of social media, as well as cell phones and other electronic devices. So we are so pleased to have you with us this fine day. It is my prayer that at the end of the day, we will be able to look to the hills from which cometh our help, because the Bible encourages us and tells us that our help cometh from the Lord. Amen? So I am Pastor Sonny James, and I'm so elated to be surrounded with some of the most awesome people of faith on this planet. And I might be a little bit biased, but nonetheless, I'm confident in shouting out to the hills that God has surrounded me and encouraged me by and through the lives of many people that are a part of this broadcast, that are part of this ministry. And so as we go forward, I want to encourage all of you watching or listening, be encouraged this day because God is so much better than just good. He's fantabulous. And so I pray this morning is a blessing to you. And I thank God for him opening the window of opportunity that we can come together yet again and give glory, honor, and thanks to a living King who certainly lives and abide within us. So praise God for uh, our Lord and Savior this morning. Thank God for each and every one of you who are connected to this broadcast and that have decided to serve ye the Lord by way of your faithful fellowship and worship. So without any further ado, I want to open the airways. Uh, as I said here during the COVID-19, uh, a lot of individuals or several individuals may not be able to get onto uh, the social media links or platforms that we have. So they will be calling in via the cell phone and they will be able to participate in the service live right here with us. Amen. So I'm excited about that. I never thought the day would come when we have to uh, be talking to each other via the telephone or social media. But here we are. So to God be the glory. So I'm going to open the airways now. I'm going to ask that um, Sister Valerie open the service in prayer and invite the Lord to come and be with us and to fellowship with us on this fine day. Sister Valerie. Praise the Lord. Praise him. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. The head of my life. He's worthy to be praised because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank I'd like you, to Lord. start a prayer now. All fathers, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Yes. Most of all, my Father, I want to thank you for letting us be able to live to see another day. And thank we thank those that made it and those who didn't. But they get there somehow. Yes. We just want everybody to be on one accord because we need you and we love you. So we just want to praise your name yes. because you are worthy to be praised. Yes, and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord Savior's name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. So those of you who are watching abroad or near or listening by way of electrical or cell phone device, I just encourage you to give a shout out with a hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly invite God in to be with us today. I do have a, a, a couple of uh, housekeeping notes to, to uh, cover. Uh, we are so excited that many of you have decided to become faith partners with this ministry. As our new corporate covering is unveiled, Kingdom Builder Ministries. And as we move forward, launching the ministry, partnering with many of you to help you, number one, have a covering, and number two, have a place of worship where you can go to. And we thank God that uh, the second Sunday in June, we will actually move into a most fabulous edifice, uh, a place that can house the ministry and to be uh, a mechanism and a means of serving the people of God, not just in our own community, but throughout our city and elsewhere. So we thank God for uh, preparing the building that we will soon move into. So we have just a couple of weeks left before we uh, move into that building. So thank God for that. Uh, the other thing is on this day, we do find ourselves having members, committed faith partners who are uh, battling in their health. And we pray their strength today. We have individuals that find themselves incarcerated. We pray their strength today. We have individuals that find themselves on their sick bed and just really in a faith struggle. We pray their strength today. We find many couples all over the globe struggling to get back to their base and struggling to maintain their faith and struggling to keep their families together. Hallelujah. And we pray their strength today as well. Amen. So we thank God for those of you who will touch with us and believe with us that God reigns supreme. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This service is not going to be long today because, um, well, a few reasons why. I know many folks are looking to get out and do their holiday celebrations, and I dare not uh, get in the way of that uh, unless I'm getting an invite to each and every one of those celebrations. Amen. <laughs> I will come and pray over your food and bless it in many ways. God bless you. But I truly give God the honor today because as I prepared all week, and asking God, what would you have for your people? What is it that we are going through? How can I, in such a short period, how can I convey um, our position, what our position should be, and how do I move forward in that? Because many people are aware of who Christ is, have professed Christ to be their Lord and Savior, but yet there's a gap between the knowledge they have, the desire they have, and the walk. And I want to encourage all of you because I myself and many, many leaders all over the world have likewise had similar struggles and, and dilemmas. And so through the word of God, we can find encouragement. Amen. We can find our place. Amen. While we're here on this earth. Praise God. Now, before we start. Uh, today, I want to open the airways up to those that are on the phone line, if there be any, that would like to share a word of encouragement, because what we have to realize is that although the senior pastor does have the mantle to bring forth the word of God, God is in all of us. God can use all of us. I'm so encouraged by my dear uh, sons in the gospel Nick and Chris Taylor, who, if you look at it on the surface, well, what can they teach a man like me? Well, I want to tell you something. They can teach me an awful lot. They can teach me a lot about how God chooses people based on his own merit, his own reason. And so many of us have become discouraged because we can't see the forest for the trees. I want to encourage you today that God hears your cry, and God wants to use you. God wants to heal his people through you and through your testimony. So to God be the glory. And with that, I want to open the airways and give individuals an opportunity 
if they have a word of encouragement or if they'd like to share, I'd like for them to be able to uh, be included and participate in the actual live service. So I want to open the airways now. And if any one of you have a word of encouragement, please bless the people of faith this morning. The lines are open. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, you know, it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's awesome when we can come together and give God the glory and the praise. But sometimes when you're praying all night long, sometimes when you're on your face before God so long, sometimes when it's time to just give that shout out, sometimes we're quiet. And that's okay, too. So I want to uh, encourage the people of faith today that are listening. God has a purpose for you. God has a call for you. God wants to use you to set the captives free. And we're going to be encouraged today by the word of God. And listen, this is not going to be a long service this morning. Hallelujah. But I do want to start off from just giving him some praise through some song of encouragement and I believe Sister Valerie had already said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So I'm going to just sing a few courses of that this morning, and prayerfully it will encourage someone that is um, watching uh, alongside of us right now. Amen. So those of you who are on our phone line, I'm going to ask that you just simply uh, sing along in your spirit that we don't have a bunch of voices echoing all over together because Lord knows my singing voice is not the best. So any interference really will mess me up. <laughs> so I just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. But this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I want to extend this invitation to any of you that are listening right now. Sometimes it's just you and God. Sometimes you're all by yourself or you feel that way. But you know what the devil can never take from us is our spirit of praise. Amen. No matter what we're going through, we can always rejoice. We can always sing out. We can always sing a song unto the Lord. So I want to encourage you now, wherever you might sit, wherever you might stand, wherever you might be, to just be encouraged and just sing along this very simple chorus. And it goes like this. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Tell them, I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. That means a lot to somebody this morning, simply because you know what you're going through. You know what the enemy is trying to do to distract you. You know what he's trying to do to get you off base, to get you off point. But I want to encourage you this morning that you can look to the hills from which cometh your help. And the Bible says your help cometh from the Lord. And when we say this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. What we're saying is that no matter what obstacles face me, no matter what trick the enemy uses to distract me, no matter what is before me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And this is the day that the Lord the one that I call on, the one that I lean on, the one that I trust on, the one that I expect to answer my prayers, the one that hears me when nobody else hears me. We're able to go directly to the throne of grace and mercy, and we're able to proclaim victory in spite of how things might look. I don't know about any of you watching or listening, but as I even speak those in words of encouragement to myself, we have Nicole who's battling with her family this day. In just a couple of days, she has to make some real heart-wrenching decisions regarding um, the life of her mother. And what, what an awesome 
burden to carry, to be the one that has to carry that mantle to say, do we pull it now or do we let it go? And so we stand encouraging her this morning that no matter what lies ahead of you, this is the day that the Lord has made. I want to encourage you to rejoice and understand that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we just sing out again, this is the day. And the background says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And then the background says, that the Lord has made. And then you tell them from the pit of your soul, I will rejoice. See, that's when the victory comes. No matter what the devil's trying to convince you of, no matter what he's trying to do with the people around you, when you say, I will rejoice and be glad in it, you're denouncing anything negative and you're proclaiming the victory is yours. Hallelujah to God be the glory. So remember that this day, victory is yours. Victory is yours victory is yours. Hallelujah. I give God the honor and the praise today. Whether you're watching uh, in your office, whether you're in your car, whether you're uh, on the beach, whether you're in, wherever you are, the bus station, the train terminal, on a flight somewhere, uh, wherever you are, I want you to be encouraged and know that God is watching and he is here. And my job today is to encourage you to partner with you that we together can go through the gospel of Christ and together we can bring out not just religious rituals, but we can bring out and build a stronger faith walk with each and every one of us. And so I want to partner with each and every one of you because your testimony is your testimony. Your story is your story. Nobody can tell it just the way you can. Nobody can embrace it the way that you can. I'm so encouraged. Recently, I met a, a, a brother named Andy. And I want to tell you something, people of faith. It's one thing to say that you believe. But it's another thing that when you take your faith and you put legs to it, you put feet to it, and you put that thing to work and bless the Lord, the Lord began to bless him through an acquaintance and the Lord began to do things through him. And he began to then turn around and say, Lord, I want to do something to bless you. And he turned around and he said, Pastor, it's not much. I don't have much to give, but I want to just bless you with this right now. I want to bless the ministry because you've touched me in such a personal way. And so I just acknowledge Brother Andy this morning, and I want him to know that God sees your heart. God knows exactly what he's called out of you. And my job is to prayerfully partner with you, Brother Andy, and so many of, of, of you out there listening, um, to partner with you and to help build you up and strengthen your faith that you too can go and be a vessel to set the captives free. God bless you this morning. I'm so encouraged. Um, we have many folks popping uh, onto the uh, line, uh, watching via social media. I thank God for you today. But as I began preparing, I really realized that, like me, many of you struggle in different areas. Like me, many of you uh, know or believe that God is calling you to do something better or different. Like me, you understand that from a youth, you were brought up into the ways of uh, faith. You understand that you don't always get things right. You don't always make the right calls. You don't always befriend those that you should befriend. Sometimes you might dismiss someone that God has sent into your life to be uh, a blessing unto you. Well, I want to encourage you this day through the word of God that we can overcome. There's an old uh, Negro spiritual that would sing, and I'm not going to dare try to sing it, but it was uh, one of the course would say, we shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Well, people of faith, I believe that today is the day that the Lord has made. And I want to encourage you to rejoice 
and to be glad in it. Don't look at the obstacles before you. Don't look and let the devil have you stare down your past. Our past is our past, amen? Let's bury it where it is. Take the good, take the testimony out of it, but let us prepare ourselves now to be better equipped. Some of us struggle with being late. Some of us struggle in our finances, being faithful in our financing. Some of us just struggle with being faithful to one another, amen. Some of us struggle with being faithful parents, amen. Some of us struggle in our schooling, amen. Some of us struggle with just being able to tell the truth, amen. Whatever the struggle is, whatever your journey is, I want you to know that God has a place and a purpose for you. So let's get into the word of God today. Let us share one to another what I believe God's purpose for this ministry and the people of faith that are connected, what he has for us on this day. And so as I do so, I have such a small space here to work within, not much room, but I want to ask you all to go with me to the book of Luke. And we're going to go into the 10th chapter. <laughs> I pray that the Lord will allow me to get through this word because there's so much richness. There's so much in it. It's amazing how he will allow you to read the same passages over and over and over and over again. And according to your faith, each time you read the word of God, he can deliver something new. He can speak higher heights, deeper depths. He can take the volume to a higher level. And I just thank God this morning that as we read this word, praise God, that we will be able to see him in our lives and to really press forward. There's so many of you out there that I'm encouraged by. And I want to give a shout out here um, to even a new sister in our life, Sasha, who has had her uh, own ways of coming into the gospel. And now I'm so excited because I believe this is the day that God is turning things up. Uh, the same in Sister Victoria. I believe God is turning things up. But as he turns it up, I want us not to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy because he also is sitting back trying to derail us, dethrone us, and to distract us, amen? But no weapon formed against you people of faith will prosper today because this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We will walk in our victory, amen? So as I uh, enter into this uh, with you, I want to also um, make sure that you all understand that we are still experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh, I am getting uh, messages um, that certain people are still not able to connect with us, and I do apologize for that. Um, once social distancing ends, then I will look forward to Nicholas and Chris coming by my side and making sure we work out all of the kinks. But until such a time as that, we shall move forward. Amen. So thank all of you for coming. When I began preparing, uh, I asked the Lord, what is it that we need to hear on this day? And <laughs> sometimes the response is funny. I'm sure many of you sit back sometimes and you get in your closet with just you and the Lord, and he just exposes some real stuff to you that you find very ridiculously funny, amen? Stuff that only you chuckle at. Stuff that if you told everybody else where it came from, they probably think you're, you've got some issues or, well, you probably have some issues, so you don't share them. And today's sermon is, is perhaps one of those for me because uh, as the Lord began to uh, share with me, um, what came to me was, it's time for a checkup from the neck up. And that made me chuckle because I said, well, what in the world is that all about? 
And I began to look into my own heart and search me. And I know that if God could reach me today, I'm praying and trusting that he can reach somebody else. Amen. So if we were to give a title to this message is the sermon title today would be it's time for a checkup from the neck up. Amen. To God be the glory. Father, as we now partake of your word, we ask that you open up your word. And Father, take just one small nugget and plant it in the pit of our soul. Plant it so far in the pit of our souls that it take root and begin to manifest itself through our earthly vessel. Father God, that not that we can boast and brag about who we are in you, but that we'll be able to brag about you and people will be able to see um, the light of Christ in us and the faith walk that you've strengthened us to have. And for that, Lord God, we just say thank you. And we're so encouraged this day. Now have your way. Move the speakers out of the way, oh God, that you can be on the center stage, center point where you belong. Have your way today. Bless your people abundantly. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So I'm going to try my best to get through this. I want to touch on a few things. And as I do so, uh, I know already I'm hearing some hallelujahs via social media right now because some of you, God has just been cracking you up. God has been taking you to such a depth that nobody understands the faith walk or the journey that you're on. Amen. And sometimes you find yourself just laughing going, oh, my God, what is going on? Sometimes you just find yourself where it's just you and God alone, and that is a comforting place to be in, amen, because it's when God gets you to sit still. It's when God gets you to where he can just whisper a, a, a funny funny something to you that only you understand, that he can get your ear, he can get your attention, and you start looking upon the things of Christ and denying your flesh, amen. So as I prepared this week, the Lord led me to the book of Luke. And as we did, I'm going to start um, in the 25th verse. And um, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to, inher in to inherit eternal life? He said unto him in verse 26, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Now, isn't it amazing how, just like when many of you parents deal with your children and you sit down to talk to your child, you actually already know the beginning, the middle, and the end of that story. However, you ponder things with your child to provoke them to think for themselves about what it is that they've done or that they're contemplating doing. So Jesus likewise talks to us through parables that sometimes are kind of funny. Sometimes the parables make us look at ourselves and take an internal look and say, my God, I thought I had it all together, but I really realized how far off base I am. I know I'm speaking to somebody today because God is calling many, many people. He's looking for a new remnant, a new group of people that will raise up like uh, Sister Angela, who's out there listening and watching and participating and so eager to be able to help other women to overcome the things that, that uh, she's overcome in her life. And like Sister Riddle, who has always just amazing me absolutely has me flabbergasted and floored when I look and see one day she said oh no pastor I'm, I'm not I'm not leader material I'm not no I don't see myself as a leader and as I'm watching all of the stuff that God allows to just fall on her lap and fall on her shoulders I just say my God now I really understand what the word of God is talking about when he says he'll never put more on you than you can bear because I watch her day in and day out handle stuff that, oh, my God, I'll have to confess and say, I'm so glad it's not me because some of those items, some of those dilemmas, wow, only by the strength of God. And so I want to partner with these individuals and help them to really, really understand where God has them so that they'll be launched into their destiny just like you and help set the captives free. So returning to the word of God in verse 27, and he answered saying, thou shalt love 
the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Now, I want to just tell you how funny this was to me because he starts off by talking about himself and how our heart and mind should be towards him. But right in the midst of that, he turns his affections off of himself and he turns our eyes off of what's right in front of us or what we religious folk want to always focus on. And he turns our eye towards simple processes that a lot of times we overlook. And so he says, and I know I might be cracking up today, and some of you might be watching going, that pastor's crazy. I have no clue what he's laughing at, and that's okay, because many of you watching, you sit, you lie, you stand right where you are, just cracking up, chuckling, because God has shared a nugget with you that the rest of us don't understand or appreciate, but you know exactly what God is doing, amen, and that's where I am today. So he says, he says, and in all thy mind, and he says, uh, let me repeat that, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. In verse 28, and he said unto him, thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Verse 29, but he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? You see, you don't question all of the other stuff. Love thy Lord, thy God, with all their heart, all their mind, all thy soul. We can embrace that. But then when he talks about how we are to think about others and how we're to position our minds and ourselves, what he's talking about and what he's trying to get us to understand and see is that neighborly love. Now, why would God mix loving him with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, our whole being, our whole existing, talking about a neighbor? He's trying to pull us and pull our heart to be positioned for what he has for us. Amen. I'm cracking up inside. If someone could go on the inside of me, I am just riveting and shaking because this message is for me. Because oftentimes, and like many of you, you know the law, you prescribe to the law. In fact, you put so much credence on the law. We even have religious groups that argue with one another about what thus say the Lord. We have groups that will argue Old Testament versus New Testament. Well, the, everybody must have the Old Testament or no, the Old Testament was the old and everybody has to live by the new. And I'm just so I'm just baffled at how God, through his word, he kind of mixes them all together. He kind of brings us back center. So when we talk as Christians, oftentimes growing up, we know that we hear about Jews and Gentiles. But being honest with you, a lot of us don't really understand the depth of what Jesus was doing back then. And it's amazing how in this parable, when he's talking about himself, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all that mind. He's, in other words, he's saying everything about us should be consumed with the love of God. Everything we should we do, our affection should be on those spiritual things, not on fleshly things. Everything that comes across our desk, the way we handle people in our business, businesses, in our church lives, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, all of those things are found in the word of God. Hallelujah. If God doesn't do anything but minister to me this day, I'm so excited about it. So he says in verse 28, and he said unto him, thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. It's like, well, what, what, what am I to do? Okay, I get the love thy God with all my mind. I get that. I, I, I understand that you want me to think holy, and I get that, that you want me to think on the things concerning you. But what's up with this neighbor dude? Why, where does that come in? Because I've got some trifling neighbors. But you see, what God wants to do is to turn our affections more on him to realize how can we truly love God who we cannot see? 
and we can't even love the neighbor that's right in front of us. How can we take care of the things of God, but yet we lack in our relationships one to another? Woo! My God! Like I said, this message might just be for old Pastor James today. And if that's the case, I'm fine with it too. But my prayer is that after I leave this message today, that I can say, it's time for a checkup from the neck up, starting with me. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so as we go to verse 29, but he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, um, who is my neighbor? Who, who are you talking about? Are you talking about the dude next door? Are you talking about that cat across the street three houses down? I know you're not talking about Shorty that's at the end of the block down the way because he off the chain, and I'm not dealing with that joker. <laughs> are you talking about a family member that's offended me? Oops, ouch. You're talking about somebody that crossed me? He's setting the stage, people of faith, that even those that have crossed us, even those that have abandoned us, even those that have done us wrong, even those that have been trifling to the core, God is trying to tell us the importance of forgiving each other and loving us, loving one another to the max, even loving our enemies. My God, when he began to open this up in my heart, I really had to have a checkup from the neck up because there's so many relationships that have been in the past that have been unsettled. I know many of you don't know the names that I'm going to mention, but I'm going to confess that so that I can go and try my best to make those things right. And so I know they're not listening now, but Angie and Donna, I want to make sure that I reach out to you today before the sun shall set and make sure that you know that I love you. I love you. I love you. And I thank God for you. And you see, Sometimes there are relationships that you have. They may not, you know, always give God glory and honor. But when God brings you people to bless you, we need to recognize that. Sometimes he brings a challenge. We need to recognize that. Can anybody right now, just under the sound of my voice, just admit to yourself, it's time for a checkup from the neck up. Hallelujah. I just thank God for you this morning that all of you that agreed with me right now in that, that you can realize and recognize that, yes, God does have the law. And yes, God does expect certain things out of us. But how can he expect us to understand the depth of things? And we truly can't even understand the simple things. Amen. Amen. I know that that blessed somebody this morning. I know that that allowed somebody to uh, uh, say amen. Um, I'm getting all kinds of notifications on the screen. Uh, I want you to um, know everyone that I see those, but without Chris and Nick here, I dare not touch my screen because I'm concerned that I might delete the online thing. So bless the Lord. If you want to continue to communicate, uh, feel free to do so. Amen. But watch what Jesus does here. In verse 30, he says, and Jesus answering said, now watch this parable. And for me, the parable begins to take flight in my life. The, this parable begins to take shape and take form and take fashion that I can actually take this word and I can make it practical, that it becomes applicable. And then for some of you out there that are called, praise God, by way of the Holy Spirit, you will make it deliverable. Amen. And even like some of you out there that didn't think you were leaders like uh, Sister Riddle, I beg to differ. Because if you look at your life and look what God allows you to overcome, oh my God, 
Can you imagine how awesome it'll be when your testimonies rain forth and people that go through the same things that you've been delivered through, when they hear your story, how awesome it'll be when they'll be able to say, thank you, Lord. You just ministered to my soul. So, amen. Verse 30 says, and Jesus answered, saying, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. People of faith, I want you to put on your spiritual ears. I want you to open your spiritual eyes. I want you to give God total permission to minister to you like never before. This may not be a brow burning and hop, hopping and jumping and shouting hallelujah sermon. But my prayer is that your spiritual eyes will become open more so today than they were yesterday. Bless the Lord. And so we see here in this story that a certain man in this parable, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves. And the thieves stripped him of all his stuff. They even wounded the man. So when I see this, I'm amazed because God is showing us a lot of times we don't think that we overlook things. We don't think we overlook people. We don't think that um, uh, we get things wrong. We think that we are holy. We think that we know what we're doing. We think that we know what we're talking about. We think that we've got all four corners covered. But in this parable, what Jesus is doing is he's setting the, the platform for us to see ourselves. See, this is a man in this parable. This is a man that's traveling. He's, he's now come under attack. He's, he's stripped. He's beaten. And the word of God says, left half dead. So this is not just somebody that's just laying on the side of the road in a drug overdose. This isn't somebody that's just out there um, uh, waiting to beg upon you as you come along. This is a man that in his physical state, if we read the word of God, the word of God at the end of verse 30 says, leaving him half dead. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So this man was in no position to care for himself. He wouldn't be able to care for himself if he wanted to. He didn't have a debit card on him. Amen. He didn't have a uh, uh, Starbucks gift card on him where he could just get up and go get himself a mocha, mocha latte or whatever. It wasn't a man that can just get up and just dust off his wounds and go about himself. This is a man that really needed help. Amen. Let me ask you listeners right now, is there anyone of, amongst you right now that honestly can say, Lord, I need some help right now. I really need to see your hand moving in my life. How about you ministers that are called to preach and teach the gospel, yet many of us struggle. We have small numbers, but yet God is trying to show us something big, but we need help. We don't need just a little help. We need a lot of help. We need help that can only come from on high. You see, a lot of times God will position things around us and about us that show us crystal clear that without the move of God, that we will be left for dead. Oh my gosh. I pray that this word ministers to somebody today. I pray that it strengthens you and encourages you because as you now open your spiritual eyes, you, I pray that you will begin to see that there's a lot of things available that you are already too equipped to have the answer for. That's right. There is a ministry God is trying to birth inside of you. There is an experience, a life experience. There may be a resource that God has already equipped you with. But because a lot of times we don't see the gravity of the matter at hand, or we come with our religiosity, we come with our preconceived ideas and notion about everything and about everybody. If women in church don't wear a hat, I don't want to sit by them. I only sit with women that have the big buffalo hat coming around their skull. Oh, if people dress in suits and ties, well, I don't like going to that church because the Bible tells me I can come as I am. Oh, if people dress too down and they wear holy jeans to church, I don't want to go around them because they don't show reverence to God. Am I speaking to anybody's heart this morning? One of the biggest topics uh, of argument between uh, religious groups is the Sabbath. 
Well, let me help put that to rest. We are going to be in the future teaching some of the principles that the Jewish people prescribe to. Now, you'd say, well, pastor, why is that so important? Why do you want me to know stuff that, heavens, I, I don't even know if I've ever heard about before? Because we've got to learn to take the gospel of Jesus Christ at its entirety and to be taught by the word of God. So if I say to you that Sunday is the best day for us to meet because of everyone's work schedule, well, it's okay if we come together on Sunday. But at the same time, we still need to acknowledge back in the old, in a different dispensation, under a different principle, what God was really prescribing for his people. Now, does that mean that if you don't observe the Sabbath on Friday night to Saturday evening, that you're going to be condemned and burned in a fiery lake? Absolutely not. But it is our job to make sure that we are aware that God honors the Sabbath and we are to keep it holy and that we are to come together and we are to fellowship one to another and we are to make sure that we understand the principles of the gospel. And that means there are more books that are available to us. So when he says study to show thyself approved, well, how can we study and limit our study to what we believe we need to be reading? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I recently told a young lady, I told her, I said, you're phenomenal. There's just one problem. You want to be the keeper of the gate. And you also want to be the princess in the palace. <laughs> Well, there's a conflict there, people of faith, because if you're the princes in the palace, you better find somebody else to hold your gate down. Bless the Lord. So in the book of Hebrews, in the 10th chapter, in the 25th verse, I want you all to be encouraged, even though we're going through COVID, we are still encouraged to forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. A lot of times we, we don't see what's right in front of us. It doesn't always take a man lying down half dead, as the Bible refers to him, for us to see where we're falling short. Amen? Sometimes it's just us not feeling the importance of going to church. Well, if it's important enough in the book of Hebrews for it to be inspired, to be written, it's important enough for me. And as the pastor of this ministry, it's important enough that I share it with you. And my prayer is that God will strengthen your faith because the word of God also tells us that faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. How can a man hear? Let's the preacher be sent. So I want to encourage you. Sometimes it's not possible for you to get into the house of faith. Sometimes you're struggling with where should you worship? Where should you fellowship? Well, if you have a church home, let me encourage you to go there. But if you don't, let me also encourage you to consider partnering with Kingdom Builder Ministries. As we have many, many ministries where it's not about me, it's not about us, it's about you. Whether it's Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries or any of the other ministries that are out there. My prayer today is that you will wake up spiritually and come out of that sleep that you've been in and you will realize that there are lots of things lots of people that lay half dead right before your eyes and what i want to do is bring you a mirror to your face to show you some of those people are you it's time for a checkup from the neck up so let's continue in the word. Again, we won't be long before you today. I just want to make sure that I offer you some encouragement. Uh, you may not get as much pleasure uh, in this as I am getting because God is, even as I'm sharing it with you, he's bringing up so many things that, that I might need to consider or reconsider, things that are right before me that I might not have given enough attention to. Amen. Bless the Lord. I want to encourage you, strong people of faith, to get up and dust yourself off and to seek the will of God for your life. Amen.
bless the Lord. So he says now in verse 31, he says, and by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Now in verse 32, he says, and likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed the, on the other side. He passed him by on the other side. My God. Then in verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Verse 34, and when he went to him, and bound up his wounds. In other words, faith without works is dead. How many of us people of faith? Let's go back up to, I want to just get this in verse 31. And by chance, there came down a certain priest. Now watch this, the priest and the Levite, these are individuals that understand the law. These are what you would call experts of the law. So it's not that they don't understand God's precepts and his principles, but look what the word of God says that they do in their mind. And this is some of us even to this day. God has positioned people in our life. God has given us an understanding. It's I don't know the priest's financial status. I don't know that Levite's financial status. However, I can tell you this. I guarantee you they had enough to get this brother a burger. Now, maybe not a Big Mac, maybe not a double decker, but I know they had a, the ability to do more than what they did. And I want you to get a visual of what's happening here. And this is what's cracking me up because as I walk as a called man of God, when God ministers this to me, I'm able to look at myself and say, oh my God, look at all of those that are lying half dead right before me. And I'm acting like the priest and the Levite. I know what to do. I know that I have some resources. Like I said, I may not be able to give you that fish sandwich that you want, but I know I can give you a little strip, strip of bacon or something, a little bowl of grits or porridge or something. But because I make it up in my mind that because you don't look the way I need you to look, because you don't act the way I believe you act, or watch this, because you've hurt me and you've treated me so badly that I'm going to walk away from my personal convictions and my belief and my calling. So as we go back up in verse 27, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Well, how can we love God and we don't even love, number one, ourselves, but we don't love the people of God. We don't love the people. We don't acknowledge him in all our ways. We overlook every opportunity that we have. Now, some of you sit back and say, well, pastor, you, you're really not ministering to me today because none of this applies. Well, I beg to differ. How many of you have been late in the last 30 days to something? How many of you have spent money where you know you're never getting it back? You've spent more on helping your friends than what you've done to build the kingdom. Oh, my God, I'm talking to somebody today. Look at Brother Andy. Brother Andy is just now meeting us. Yet Brother Andy has given a tithe and an offering that actually supersedes some people's giving for a whole year. Ouch. Oops. What is it about us, good people of faith, that we're so dogmatic and judgmental that we will take the law and we will override the law or override the principles of godliness with the law of God. My gosh, I pray that planted in somebody's spirit. It might just be individuals that are incarcerated right now, and you know the walk you're walking, and you see things that many of us don't get to see, and that may have really dropped in your spirit. But those that have rule over us, how are we to treat them? Those that don't understand the depth of their, their position in your life, how are we to handle them? How are we to receive them? How are we to actually embrace them? Do we embrace them? How do we move forward? Hallelujah. Is there something that you 
have let slip by the wayside in your life today? Is there a relationship that's broken, unmended? Maybe you offended somebody. Maybe somebody's been hurt by something you said. Do they literally have to be laying down on the highway with big semi-truck tire tracks running across their forehead for us to wake up and smell the roses? I vow today, even though it wasn't my intention, I vow today to call my dear sister Angie and my dear sister Donna, and I am going to apologize to them for any offense that I may have caused. Because you see, it's important that we not just walk out in titles, that we not just walk out principle without understanding. I pray that this message is ministering to somebody today. You see, there are many good Samaritans right here on this line right now. There are many awesome people of faith, but I guarantee you, like me, if you search your heart, maybe you're always late to work. Maybe you slough off on your job. What's causing you not to be that awesome person of faith that you aspire to be? What keeps you from the will of God? And so as we look at this, this message here, and I, I tell you, I'm just almost in tears because <sighs> that Levite and that Jewish priest look a lot like me at times. You see that the Jewish priest know the law. Do any of you know the law to a T? What about those things that you don't do so well, that God really is calling you to? I want to make sure that we read the word of God and that you understand that <laughs> lip service and work, two totally different things. You can know the law. But given an opportunity, we don't live it. Now, I know I'm not the only one confessing that today. So in this story of the Good Samaritan, I find so many challenges for myself. Where do you sit today? Where do you stand today? How did things get the way that they are for you? Did you just walk down the highway and some person just jumped on you and beat you, stole everything you had and left you half dead? Did you call some of the fall that you've had in your life? Is there somebody or something that's keeping people from seeing the God in you? Now, that doesn't mean we compromise the gospel. That doesn't mean that at all. But I want to challenge you today. As we close today, like I said, this may not be a brow burning and a hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah service. But you see, I think God's doing something new right now. I think God's allowing us good folk, holy folk, to really take a deep look at ourselves and to make, allow God to change us. You see, that Levite and that Jewish priest, they knew the law, guys. And I believe God allowed this message and this, this to be in here, to set an example to me and to you, that there's so many things lying on the side of the road right in front of us. And look what the word of God says. And sometimes we have to be able to take the word literal. So as they both came by, okay, it says that they passed by on the other side. My God. So sometimes we build things up in us that we don't even want to touch things that's right in front of us. You ever said to yourself, well, listen, I had to get it for myself. They're going to have to get it for themselves, shortcake. But what is God asking us to do today? Is there somebody in your life? Is there something in your life that you just haven't come to grips with and you haven't given it to God? 
and that you haven't really confessed your faults one to another, that you haven't even gone and asked for forgiveness. You see, in this story, we can preach for hours on this because they left him there in whatever state he was in. Where is their heart condition? You see, when we walk away from things that God has called us to, where is our heart condition? Where are we really with God? Oh, I know this is reaching somebody. If it's only one beside me, because I know it's ministered to me. But you see, faith without works is dead. It's time for a checkup from the neck up. And I'm saying, starting today with me, those things that I know I have passed by, those things that were right within my circumference of influence, those things that I really, really didn't get a good handle on, those things in me, not anybody else, those things in me, I'm going to ask God to forgive me one, and I'm going to ask and trust God to give me such an opportunity that I can, through my actions, not my lip service, as the young people say on the street, don't talk me to death. Don't talk about it. Be about it. And so I want to encourage you people of faith. Is there somebody that you haven't called and checked on in a long time? You don't know what they're doing. Is there somebody who's hurt you and offended you? You don't know what God can do through you if you'll reach out to them and just say hello. Tell them that you forgive them. You see, in this story, what as we read on, we find that the Good Samaritan didn't just show up. The Good Samaritan put his heart condition on display. The Good Samaritan didn't go and cross the street and go on the other side. The Good Samaritan realized that there is something that God has entrusted in me. I may not be an expert of the law. I may not know A, B, C to Z. I may not be the most perfect person walking on earth, but what I do know is that I have a responsibility to be all that I can be. And that means if I'm going to love thy God with all my, as it says in verse 27, all thy heart, soul, strength, mind, how can I love God? and say that I love him so much, and yet I fall short in so many ways that are literally right before my eyes. My God, there's so many of you leaders listening right now that life hasn't been perfect. You haven't been perfect. You've made mistake after mistake after mistake. But I want to encourage you today that if you allow the Spirit of God to swell up in you, you may not have even been faithful in your relationships. But if you will allow God to swell the Spirit of truth inside of you, and if you embrace that, then you can say, Lord God, I desire to love thy God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength and all my mind. And I'm willing to do something about it. Not that we are saved by our works because we are not, but it's a mindset. It's a principle. It's a mind principle that we have to connect our mind with our hearts, that we can be most effective and not be so stuck on our laws and not be so stuck on our ritualistic protocol. Well, on this day, I celebrate like this. And on this day, I do that. But yet right in front of you, God is asking for a personal relationship between you and him. He's inviting you to come sup with him and him sup with you. He's inviting you to invite him into your heart. And when we do so, then he changes our heart condition to where, I'll give you an example. There are times I'm with these young men that I've mentioned earlier. And we'll go to a pantry and pick up some food. And they may not have much at all in their pantry at home. They may not have much food at all to eat. 
and the first thing on their mind is, oh, there's Mrs. So-and-so. Oh, there's Brother So-and-so. Oh, there's Mr. So-and-so. Oh, there's a senior there. And their whole heart condition is set to actually reach people of need. When's the last time you've went with the church to pick up something with the intention to be a blessing? Now, I'm not saying that you have to be like Sister Riddle and cook the best food in the world and let the pastor come and eat up all your, your vittles. I'm not saying you have to go that far. But what I am saying, this good Samaritan in, the, in this parable, in this story, this good Samaritan came by. In other words, God put him on a journey, allowed his journey to include confrontation with this individual. Amen. And as he was being confronted first with himself, he had his heart condition had to be one to be able to say, I'm going to love thy Lord, thy God, with all my heart and with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with everything in me. And I'm going to do a better job of being more accountable. I'm going to do a better job of not just being so selfish and self-centered. I'm going to look to the hills from which cometh my help. And I'm going to believe and trust that my help cometh from the Lord. So I don't have to always focus on me because I know God will fight my battles. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. This may sound weird to some of you, but I can feel right now. There may be many of you listening now that just say, well, it's, it's okay. But there, may, there are definitely a few that are saying, my God, if I just change how I think, if I just change how I process, if I just change how I present myself before the very thing that God allows to be in my path, if I will just change the things about me, maybe, just maybe, I can really be used to influence and affect the things that are around me, the people that are around me. Oh, my God. Be encouraged today because I know, like myself, Many of us have taken this word and we've fallen short. Can anybody now, under the sound of my voice, you don't have to say it out loud, but anybody out there listening, can you just say amen? There's something that I just, I'm falling short. I'm just, I know, I know that I'm gifted. I know, I know that I could, man, my God, some of you know the gospel from front to end better than anybody out there. Some of you know exactly how to take this scripture and that scripture and you know how to put it all together. But it's those little things that God allows to be right in front of you that you overlook. It's those little nuances, that little turn of the dial that you refuse to allow God to confront in you because you've made it up in your mind that this is how I roll. This is who I am. But in this parable, he takes the good Samaritan and look what he does. He doesn't allow the good Samaritan to come on the scene first. Amen. He allows the Jewish priest there's nothing that anybody could say that would make me believe that that Jewish priest does not understand the principles of the law to the T. But what does a man have? What do you have? What are you really worth? If you have not love for your brother. My God. How do you love your brother without first loving yourself and without acknowledging God as the source of your strength that'll make you on time for work, that'll make you do a better job when you're working, that'll make you embrace accountability, that'll, that'll rush the spirit of compassion upon you, the spirit of accountability, it cracks me up because <laughs> folks have come to church, but as soon as that pastor says something they don't like, all of a sudden Jesus then told them to pack ship, pack bags and jump ship. 
or as soon as somebody comes into their life. It's amazing. Where, where do you need to be strengthened today? Allow this story of the Good Samaritan to be a bridge that gets you from where you are to the next spot. And my prayer today is, like the Good Samaritan, you won't just see a need, you'll do something about it. And my challenge to you is first, see the need in yourself. And that need, I believe, should start by confessing Christ as our Lord and our Savior. In fact, the Bible tells us that if we'll confess our sins, now we can't just say it. Now that's, I need to say this. It's easy for us to get caught up in emotion and just say, oh Lord, yeah, I believe Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. But some of us are so full of religion that we haven't had a personal touch from Jesus. We have not experienced that personal relationship. Today is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I recognize that it's time for a checkup from the NECA. And I'm not interested in pointing the finger anywhere other than right here. There's so much more we can do, people of faith. Won't you partner with me today? Won't you partner to say, Lord, help me to make the changes that I need to make? Won't you start, if there's anyone listening right now, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I encourage you right now to just, wherever you might be, to say this simple prayer. Jesus, I come before you right now. First, Lord, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I thank you for never leaving me nor forsaking me. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and my personal Savior. I confess that. I proclaim that. I believe he died on the cross that I might have life and that more abundantly. And I believe that if I will repent of my ways, turn and acknowledge him in all ways, I believe he shall direct my path. Thank you, Lord, for receiving me now. It is in Jesus' name that I'm praying and giving thanks. Amen. Now, people of faith, Amen. there are tons of different ways that we can approach the throne of grace and mercy. And some holy rollers, they would say, well, pastor, you left out the one scripture, you left out the one word. But you see, it's not just about the law anymore. You see, when Jesus came on the scene, that's when grace entered in. So how many of you listening right now can honestly say, well, I can't remember all the scriptures, pastor. I don't know exactly what it says. My prayer is that you'll allow God to write the scriptures upon your heart. That just like the Good Samaritan, you may not have, have it all together, but you'll have a heart to do something with what you've got. I thank God for each of you today. I pray this prayer because I believe it applies to me also. That the word of God says that if I, rep if I repent, confess my faults, if I'm asking Christ into my life as my Lord and personal Savior, recognizing that it was only him that shed blood for me, that I might have life and life more abundantly, then I want to encourage you today because you shall be saved. First, you shall be saved from yourself. And then God will embrace you and use you to help set the captives free. I just thank God today because this has been for me I tell you, I was sitting in my car right before service, and I was just cracking up because I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> Here I am preaching to folks. And like my attorney, Eric King, would say, Pastor, how are you going to preach faith to people? And here it is. You don't even believe that God's going to bless you with that big old building because you got a heart of gold and you want to bring everybody in 
and bring them in out the cold and you want to bless the world, but your faith is so small, you only think you're entitled to a small portion of the building. Pastor, when are you going to open your spiritual eyes and see what God has for you because he can trust you? So I want to encourage the rest of you that are listening right now. What does God put on your plate today? What does God have before you? Then it might take a little more faith. It might take a little more of you challenging yourself. I want to partner with you today. I'm asking that you partner with this ministry, Kingdom Builder Ministries. We have for years operated under the tag of Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. And although Keep It Real is what God gave me, I believe Kingdom Builder Ministries is what he's given us. So let's partner together. Is there a ministry that you know God has for you? Let's work together. Let me help you to launch you into your destiny that you can set the captives free. Partner with us, and we will be so faithful over every blessing that God sends. And I'm asking that all of you now help us to achieve the goals that we have right in front of us and to uh, participate in our fundraiser with us as we all go through our Cash App fundraiser, the dollar sign, launch the kingdom. And so I'm encouraging you now, if this word is ministered to you in any way, shape, or form, I'm asking that you partner with us and be a faith partner and help us to achieve our goals, that we can move into our new edifice, that we can open the doors to all who want to come and be such a blessing that we can meet their needs in a practical way and make the word of God so applicable. And then for those that he sends us, like you, listening right now, that you know there's a ministry brewing in you, I want to help you to make it deliverable, to set the captives free. This is Pastor Sonny James. I want you to reach out to me and call me personally at area code 513-487-8843. My personal email is Pastor. Sonny James, that's P-A-S-T-O-R-S-O-N-N-Y-J-A-M-E-S. And I ask you to shoot me a message. Now, I want to, I want to tell you that my email has been, I mean, my, uh, my uh, phone number, my voicemail has been acting up. So if you try to leave me a voice message, I ask that you shoot me a text message that I can call you directly because something's wrong with my voicemail, and I may not ever know that you've called. I may not ever know you've reached out for prayer or you've reached out to partner or whatever the case may be. If you haven't been faithful, please decide to partner and be a faith partner with this ministry. Go on to our fundraising app on the cash app. Uh, it's the dollar sign launch L A U N C H the T H E kingdom K I N G D O M launch the kingdom. Let us set the captives free. I'm excited that you came with us today. My prayer is that we'll get this message into the hands of those that are in nursing homes, the hands of those that are in hospitals on this sick bed, into the hands of those that find themselves in prison and behind the wall. I want us to encourage those that feel hopeless. I want us to uplift the spirit of those like Nicole who are facing a horrific decision to decide what to do, uh, life or not. And I want to encourage all of you to be faithful because you are the absolute best that God has to offer. And as I often say, don't get it twisted, shortcake. So bless the Lord. Brother uh, Donald, I want you to know that we're praying your strength. I know you've been battling in your health. And I pray right now by way of the Holy Spirit that he will make all things right for you and that he will encourage you to get you more rest and to be strong so that when it's time for him to send you back out, that you will be an awesome vessel ready to be used by God. And I thank God for all of you who have watched today. And I pray right now that you are made whole and that you are encouraged. I am going to ask if uh, uh, Sister Riddle is on the, uh, still on the line with us, uh, that she will close us out in our benediction. Um, before I do so, I want to open the airways one last time. If there's anybody listening uh, by way of your cellular device or some other um, uh, means, if there's something God has put on your heart that you'd just like to share and encourage, a testimony, whatnot, briefly, as it may be, 
I want to open the airways and give you an opportunity to just speak out to the people of God and to um, have your voice heard. Is there anyone today that uh, before we close, um, that God has spoken to you or ministered to you in such a special way that maybe only you understand? The airways are now open. Bless the Lord. I know that it's sometimes difficult, especially with our um, technology and, and the problems that we have. So I also want to open the airways up to my partner and my wife, Sister Kirsten James, if there's anything that she'd like to uh, come on the line and share. If not, we will close the service. Um, anything of encouragement um, for the people of faith or just to say hello, that would be a wonderful thing. Amen. Good night, everyone. Hello. Thank God for the word today and uh, pray your blessings over each and every one of you. Have a blessed week. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. So let us go on to along our journey and let us understand that this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us all say, I shall rejoice and be glad in it. And let us embrace the fact that it is time for a checkup from the neck up. Be blessed today. Again, this is Pastor Sonny James wishing you all a safe, wonderful, healthy, blessed, and prosperous life. Do we have uh, Sister Riddle on the line still with us? If she has... Um, amen. If, we, uh, if there's nothing else that anyone would like to share, I want to open the airways that uh, Sister Riddle can close our service with our benediction. Bless the Lord. Reach out to us and be faithful, people of faith. We need faith partners to help us realize all of the goals that God has put before us. He can do it with or without us. Sister Riddle. The benediction is coming from Jude, the 24th and 25th verse. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to prevent you falling before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God and Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. There is one other last piece of business that I want to do. Not that I try to endorse anybody uh, all the time, but sometimes I, I want to share with there are different ministries that are part of this ministry. And we do want to show support to those ministries that support us. So during the time that we're still affected by the COVID-19 and we're still ordered to wear masks and to have social distancing, as you go about your day, I'm going to encourage you to get you a mask, put it on your face. And if you don't have any of these nice design masks, you can give us a call because we do have partners in this ministry that design their no sweat masks to keep you healthy and safe. You all be safe. God bless you. We love you in Christ. You are the absolute best that God has to offer. And don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Short cake. Right. <laughs> God bless you all. I love you in Christ. Be blessed. And go and see what God has for you. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Peace. Amen. Love you all. Love you. Love you all. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Uh, Pick up my quarry. I'm